Excellent question, Derek. What do you do with people who say, I don't want to sell? What do you do with people who tell you, don't ever call us back, we are not moving? Couple things. One, of course you're not in the business to collect leads. You cannot bring, hey, here's 3,000 leads, that's my mortgage payment this month. <laughs> Doesn't work, right? You need to convert leads into appointments, listings to get paid, which is what I teach you. That's all I teach you. How do I get leads? How do I get appointments? How do I get listings? All my systems all are about that. Derek, my client, you know that. You have probably all my systems, right? So what do you do if you just don't want to collect leads? A couple of things I'm going to give you. If you check statistics, now let's just use the expired listing as an example. If there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten expireds, out of those ten expireds, and again, your statistics, check that. Just do some research in your MLS to know what the ratios are. But as an example, these three will never sell out of the 10. And again, yours may be completely different. It can be one, can be five. I'm just using it for illustration. These three will go back to the same agent. We'll relist with the same agent. This one will relist right away. And then we have these three, where there will be nothing happening for a while. And it can be a few days, it can be a couple weeks, it can be a few months. And then go on the market with a new agent. So some will never relist. Some will go back with the same agent, some will relist right away, with a new agent, and some will take some time. Here's the thing. All of these will tell you we don't want to sell. All of these will tell you, don't call us, in most cases. All of these will say no in one form or another. Why is that? Going back to the human psychology, they're afraid. They're afraid to tell you the truth. Yes, we want to sell. Yes, we'd love to live in that beautiful house down in Florida. But because the real estate agents don't have the best reputation, we ain't going to tell you shit because we don't trust you yet. Which brings us to the key. The agent who gets the listing, this agent who lists these three or four, is the agent they like, trust, and respect the, more, the most. So your job during your interaction at the beginning and through your follow-up is to build that connection with them, to build that trust with them to put as little pressure as possible on, well, uh, have you made a decision yet? Are you guys ready to list? Come on, tick tock. I need a listing. I need to pay my mortgage. What are we doing over here? That's Vito, the real estate agent using the Brooklyn approach. I don't know where I got it from. I think it's funny. <laughs> so the problem is that you, Derek, and others are talking about is how do you determine who's going to be who? How do you distinguish between these three and these three? And I tell you, when I started doing all this stuff, and I had sellers who were very sincere and honest with me, who said, no, don't call us, we're not going to list. Two months later, call a banker sign in the front yard. Well, wait a second, they just told me they're not going anywhere. And I also had leads who said, yeah, we may be doing something down the road. And I kept in touch for a year, year and a half, two years, nothing. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you cannot. Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't. Are you with me? So now, if these three will sell, these of course we can't do anything about, but I would follow up with these for at least five times. Five follow-up touches minimum before I say, you know what, I don't think they're going to do anything. Because I'd rather follow up with those who will not sell than lose those who will. Because here is the bottom line. Very often the sellers don't know what they're going to do. They will tell you one thing because it's fear-based. But some time goes by, time passes, and they're like, you know what, that house, I'd still like to live there. Just because the house doesn't sell doesn't mean they're just going to give up. Now if somebody tells you, absolutely don't contact me. And you've had people who are very clear in their communication. 
Do you drop them? Do you delete them? Do you honor their wishes? And many of you commented on it, well, no, we've got to honor and respect our wishes. And that's fine. But ask yourself, is my not following up following my emotion or logic? What is the best business decision? What would serve the client the best? Ask yourself that question. Because from my personal experience I can share with you, many people who first told me no, absolutely not, suddenly said maybe. What's changed is just simply uh, they liked me a little more, they trusted me a little more, they respected me, there was more con connection. Even if it meant after a certain time through follow-up I developed enough trust and connection where they said we're really not going to go. It just wouldn't make sense to us. Or my relationship with my daughter just kind of soured and she married this guy we don't like. Or my job transfer didn't go through or whatever else. And that's okay too. But I had discovered that wouldn't happen before at least five touches, five follow-up touches. And very often my decision was based nothing but an instinct. It was based on nothing else other than instinct. Because there is no logical formula. Because their behavior is not logical. Does it make sense to you guys? So I wish I could tell you, do this, do that. It's not black and white in this case. And I would rather follow up and give it a few more tries where I'm absolutely certain or pretty certain, certain enough, comfortable enough to say, let's pull the plug on this one, let's keep in touch with these folks. One of the things you can check is the history in the MLS. If the property has been relisted two or three times, especially with different agents, that's always a very good indicator. They're motivated, they want to do something, they just hired the wrong agent. And the fact that they're discouraged now, the fact that they want to give up now, I would still keep in touch. Are you with me? This is making sense? So, set up a campaign. Where is the best possibility to develop the like, trust, and respect? It's through communication. Chat. Have a conversation. Conversation is by far the most powerful way to do that. Have a conversation. Have an honest chat with them. Here's one of the best questions you can ask. You say, John, let me ask you. If you guys could have it any way you wanted to, you could stay here, stay in the same house, same neighborhood, everything the same, or you can get that lovely condo in Florida. Be close to your daughter, enjoy your time together, rekindle the love and relationship you want with her. What would you prefer? You can have it any way you want. I can make that a reality or I can just stay. What would ideally work best for you? Aren't they powerful questions? Deep questions. Because it not only brings you clarity, it brings them a clarity. Because when they start comparing, they say, hmm, you know, if we could really have it any way you want to, we'd rather be down there. I can work with that. Even if it means not right away. Even if it means they have to go through some process. Sort things out, internally and externally. Is that helpful?